Hi guys, welcome back to the Medicinal Chemistry course presented by Pettis Amour Academy. We will be covering the first part of Chapter 8, the Sedative Hypnotics Chapter, and it will be presented by me, Carl Bouchara. There are many physiologic and biochemical factors that can influence the various stages of sleep, and as such, numerous targets for pharmacologic intervention have been discovered. The development of sedative hypnotic agents has primarily focused on one, agents that cause CNS depression via agonism of the GABA-A receptors, and two, agents that modulate hypothalamic histamine or melatonin circadian systems that, as described earlier, regulate sleep and arousal. This chapter will focus on structure activity relationships and pharmacodynamics of these agents, including barbiturates, benzodiazepines, non-benzodiazepine GABA-A agonists, melatonin receptor agonists, and histamine H1 receptor antagonists. Melatonin synthesis is concurrent with sleep, so the increase in endogenous nighttime melatonin levels correlates with the onset of sleepiness. The sleep-promoting and circadian effects of melatonin are due to agonism of both MT1 and MT2 receptors. Agonism of MT1 receptors directly facilitates inhibition of neuron firing, promoting sleep whereas activation of MT2 receptors affects the circadian rhythm settings related to the central clock. It's the indole functional group, as can be seen circled in red, that confers the affinity to MT1 and MT2 receptors. But because melatonin has very poor absorption and low oral bioavailability, it's considered a poor therapeutic agent. The indane functional group, as can be seen circled in red, is what confers the affinity to the MT1 and MT2 receptors. This shows that an aromatic isosteer is required for function because it offers optimum distance between the amide side chain at position 3 and the 5-methoxy substitution, as can be seen circled in brown. Romeltion has a higher affinity to the MT1 receptor, and this correlates with an increased ability of that drug to decrease sleep latency. However, this drug has no effect on actually maintaining that sleep. Ramaltion has several benefits. At normal doses, there is no depression of cognitive function or impact on memory or ability to concentrate. There are also no next-day residual effects, so no next-day drowsiness or sleepiness. And there is no obese potential, which means that the patient would not experience any tolerance or withdrawal symptoms. Although it's rapidly absorbed after oral administration, it's subject to extensive first-pass metabolism, leading to an absolute oral bioavailability of only approximately 2%. That, in combination with the fact that it has a short elimination half-life of 1 to 2.5 hours, this means that the drug has no accumulation. Lameltion has many metabolites when metabolized. The major one is uh, labeled as M2 and is circled in red, as can be seen in the figure. It has a much higher bioavailability, but its potency is greatly decreased as compared to Lameltion, and so it doesn't have as much of an affinity to the MT receptors. Histamine release during the day would lead to arousal, and so that's why decreased histamine release at night leads to a decreased arousal response. Antagonism of H1 receptors in the CNS promotes sedation and drowsiness and is associated with tolerance to hypnotic effects and next-day sedation. Doxylamine and diphenhydramine are both ethanolamine antihistamines, and because they can cross the brain-blood barrier efficiently, with the brain being the site of action, it can lead to very high sedation-promoting effects which can treat acute insomnia. GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the mammalian central nervous system. GABA-induced physiologic functions are mediated by at least two distinct classes of membrane-bound receptors, inotropic GABA-A receptors and metabotropic GABA-B receptors. GABA-A receptors are ligand-gated ion channels that modulate conductance of chloride ions through the cell membrane upon the binding of GABA. This leads to membrane hyperpolarization which increases the firing threshold potential and so reduces the likelihood of generating an action potential. This leads to neuronal inhibition and CNS depression. GABA-modulating drugs such as barbiturates and benzodiazepines have allosteric sites that they bind to. Barbiturates are CNS depressants with sedative hypnotic, anesthetic, and anticonvulsant activity. The binding of barbiturates to their GABA-A binding site increases the binding of GABA-A to the receptor enhancing the action of GABA and prolonging the open state of the GABA-A receptor, which allows for more chloride ion influx. 
Higher concentrations of barbiturates can also enhance the binding of benzodiazepines, but supertherapeutic concentrations of barbiturates can cause opening of the channel independently of GABA, which could explain the decreased safety associated with barbiturates when compared with benzos. With regards to its effects on sleep, barbiturates significantly decrease the time it takes to fall asleep, also known as sleep latency and increase the total time of sleep while also decreasing the occurrences of nighttime awakenings. However, barbiturates significantly impair psychomotor abilities and also decrease memory and cognitive performance. Barbiturates have largely been replaced because they can also cause a potential for abuse, leading to tolerance after long-term use and physical dependence, which can cause withdrawal symptoms when abruptly stopped. They also have high toxicity at a very low threshold, and can induce P450 enzymes in the liver and have many different kinds of drug-drug interactions. Barbiturates are derivatives of barbituric acid, which itself is devoid of any sedative hypnotic, anxiolytic, or anticonvulsant activity. Barbituric acid can undergo pH-dependent ketoenal tautomerization through a transfer of either an amino hydrogen or a methylene hydrogen to a keto oxygen. This is made possible because of a fairly acidic carbon with a pKa of around 4 at position 2, which can be seen circled in red, uh, which can be stabilized in either molecular form based on the acidity of the solution. The addition of 5,5 disubstituents to the barbituric backbone yields compounds with potent sedative hypnotic, anxiolytic, and anticonvulsant activity. These molecules have a high degree of lipophilicity, and as weak acids can be easily converted to sodium salts by treatment with sodium hydroxide. The 5,5-disubstituted barbituric acid backbone is the primary pharmacophore required for sedative hypnotic activity. Barbiturates containing at least one NH group are acidic. The relative acidity depends on the degree of N substitution as well as C5 substitution. Electron donors decrease the acidity of the compound. For barbiturates to have pharmacological activity, the compound must be a weak acid, and it must also have two 5 substituents. As the number of carbons at the R2 position increases, this increases the lipophilicity of the barbiturate, and thus increases the brain-blood barrier penetration to the site of action, which increases the activity and decreases the onset of action. As per the figures that can be seen, the potency of pentobarbital would be greater than that of beta-barbital because pentobarbital has a higher number of carbon atoms at its R2 position. However, too high a degree of lipophilicity will offset the required hydrophilicity that is necessary for the dissolution and solubility of the compound in aqueous fluids like blood. Hence, there is a limit to the lipophilicity that can be reached and pharmacological activity will begin to decrease if this limit is surpassed. In addition, more branching within the same series increases potency and decreases onset of action. So for the examples of the molecules given here, the potency of cyclobarbital is greater than that of hexafel. Even though both of these substituents have the same number of carbons, because cyclobarbital has more branching, this would increase its potency. The same concept can be applied to both of these molecules here. Between butabarbital and butethal, butabarbital is more potent because its respective substituent is more branched as compared to butethal. Now, for N substitution, N methylation at either position 1 or 2 increases the lipophilicity of the molecule and so increases its activity. This can be seen in the example given here, where methylhexatel has its N at position 1 methylated. Modification of the position 2 oxygen of the barbiturate backbone with a larger sulfur atom yields a thiobarbiturate derivative. This has increased lipophilicity, faster time of onset, and shorter duration of action compared to the oxyderivatives. If you guys would like more information, please feel free to check out the reference of this textbook. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you understood the points I made in my chapter. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments below and we'll make sure to get back to you. And stay tuned for part two of chapter eight.